everybody has their Bible. Oh, yeah. I can start on that. Say this with me. I am everything this Bible says I am. I have everything this Bible says I have. And like the, all the pastors said today, I am going to do what my Heavenly Father is telling me. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We have been on a journey, and the only way I'm going to keep this to 20 minutes is not preach the last seven weeks. So I'm moving right to today. Everybody say today. today. If, you, if you want to know where we've come from, it's been a long journey. Thank you for still continuing on. Uh, how many did want to go back to Egypt a couple of times? How many ran into some dead bodies floating there by the Red Sea? You decided you couldn't wade through it? Sinai's better. Amen. All right, Sinai's in sight. Exodus chapter 18. Exodus chapter 18. And um, I've got it all printed right out here. And notice I only have two pages in anticipation that the pastors did such a great job I wouldn't have to hardly say anything today. And the cameraman is smiling with those pearly whites. Hallelujah. <laughs> Exodus chapter 18, let's start with verse 13. It says, And it came to pass in the morning that Moses sat to, sat to, what's that say? Judge. Oh man, you're not supposed to judge. Well, we had the little grandchildren over yesterday, and we smelt something. And we both immediately began to judge. Is it Liam? Or is, that li is it that little cutie? That little cutie needed to be judged. She was carrying some extra baggage behind her. And it was necessary that it was removed. I looked for Aaron. He wasn't around. So I looked over to her and said, I need help. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Moses said to what? Judge the people and... The people stood by Moses from morning until evening. I don't have a million people under my covering. But I have found the amount of people that I do keeps me busy from morning to evening. It's really quite amazing. Anyway, when Moses' father-in-law saw... Now, I just want to bring you up to speed... Moses' father-in-law, who lived in Midian, brought his, Moses' wife and children to meet him. When Moses lived in the wilderness for 40 years, yes, he had a life. He had this beautiful babe, and he had a couple of children. And then God says, I want you to serve me. And Moses said, look, the wife's not going to let me go. He didn't ask that. He said, yes, Lord, whatever you ask. Now, he figured there's no sense of taking his wife all the way to Egypt and then trying to drag her back through the Red Sea. So he just says, okay, hon, I'll be back. I'll be back. And so he said, it's just going to be a short trip. No big deal. It's not that long. I'll just go tell all the people that they they." You know, God wants them to come out here and be free forever. I'm sure they'll, you know, it, it, we'll just pack up. I'll tell Pharaoh, God said, we're leaving. No problem. There should be no problem. I mean, knows it was a problem. And it, it took quite a while for God to intervene and work out that problem. So anyway, they finally make it back. And guess what? The gorgeous babe that Moses married. Similar to the gorgeous babe that I married. I can have a, a parallel of this. And so he gets back in the area. Everybody say, in the area. 
And uh, this is at Rephidim. How many re remember Rephidim? And so uh, the father-in-law, mama, and, and the children know that Moses is back in town. Hallelujah. And so they all go out to meet him. How many knows that's a, a, a wonderful thing? And uh, Jethro, the father-in-law, he comes up to Moses and said, you know, you really are a good son-in-law after all. You left your wife, and I had to take care of her while you were gone, but, you know, I'm pretty impressed. There's a few people that's followed you. Apparently, God has done some amazing things. Now, in Midian, just like with any place, a lot of gods start coming in. Jethro was a priest in Midian. He was a priest. He did serve Yahovah, the Most High God. But as with any denomination today, we bring in a few extra gods into the sanctuaries. Are you with me? J Jethro makes this statement. He comes to Moses and said, you truly are serving the Most High God. This God that you serve, now I know, is the Most High God. Powerful statement. That's found up a little farther. I was going to start with today, and I had to back up, didn't I? How many appreciates me backing up and sharing you a few things? All right, so here's the setting. So Jethro comes in. Now, Jethro is not just any father-in-law is the point that I'm wanting to make. I mean, every father-in-law has got something to say. You know? I can just tell stories. You know what I'm saying? I mean, there's, there's, there's some old men that, you know, are super spiritual. I've had some super spiritual uh, influence in, in some years. Right now, I got, this, I got this guy that, you know, <laughs> he tells stories. I love his stories. I love his jokes. At the end of it, I try to lead him to the Lord, but, you know, I still laugh at his jokes. You know, I get a kick out of it, you know. So anyway. Everybody has an opinion, everybody has words, everybody has good ideas. Are you with me? So here comes Jethro. Are you with me? A priest recognizes that Yahovah is the Most High God, respects his son-in-law to the point where he says, I, I'll serve your God. Are you with me? All right, so in this setting... Moses' father-in-law saw all that Moses did to the people. He said, what is this thing that you do to the people? Why do you sit yourself alone and all these people stand by you from morning to evening? Moses said unto his father-in-law, because the people come unto me to inquire of God. This is my message this morning, pretty much it. Inquire of God. Why are we coming up to the mountain? To find out what God says. How many wants to find out what the Father has to say? How many thinks it's, it's the most important information we could possibly have is to find out what the Most High has to say? And then how many think we ought to take it to the point of actually doing then what He says? What a concept there. You're going to enjoy one of the Sabbaths coming up that we learn. Why do we learn? Well, we learn to do. Why do we learn something? We want to learn to do. Amen. So inquire of God. When they have a matter, they come unto me, and I judge. It's a lost word in the world today. We have judges that say lawless people have more rights than law keepers. This is not right. These are not good judges. They have limited themselves with their own affections. Can I make a statement? Probably shouldn't. They're, oh, I won't come against uh, gays or lesbians or transgenders. We have a bigger problem. We have trans species people now. We've got a guy that just got a rumen installed in his body so he could eat grass. Okay. I don't know. You just can't fix stupid. You know what I'm saying? I'm sorry. I, 
I've, I'm old enough now to just call stupid, stupid. I mean, if you want to eat grass, I mean, in my day we smoked it, but my God, we didn't eat it. <laughs> what? We need to, now we need a little doggy bathroom for you? In, in the schools, we'll have to have a trans species bathroom where there's like little fire hydrants in there for the little doggy people that come in so they can, you know, what dogs do with fire hydrants, right? You know, I'm sorry. That was, it's not in the notes. I need to move on. When they have a matter, they come unto me and I judge between one and another and I do make them know the statutes of God and his laws. You know why they came to Moses? Because Moses knew what God said. Let me, let me try this side over here. The reason they came to Moses because Moses would always tell them what God said. He would tell them God's laws and statutes. But see, people read the Bible and they say, well, God didn't give the Ten Commandments yet. Moses has been teaching them the commandments for quite a while. How do you know that? He already established the Sabbath with the manna thing. He already established, I am the Lord thy God that brings you out of the land of Egypt, house of bondage. He already established, thou shalt have no other gods before me. He already established all of these things. He's, he's taught them the laws for the last seven weeks. The people come to Moses because it's the first time they have found in 40 years of slavery someone actually give them a God answer. In Egypt, they had enough gods to satisfy every question. But they were still in slavery after those questions were asked. The only God, when they answer their, your question, is freedom. Now, people say that's grace. And I, and I preach grace. But you can't have grace without truth first. You have to know the truth, and the truth will make you free. I was talking to Robert the other day. Where'd he go? There he is. All right. He's either on the camera, on the switcher, or, you know, he's doing something. Hallelujah. He's a great guy. Amen. I like your tie. He's a new man. He told me uh, the other day when we was recording, he said, Bishop, I had to come here for four years to finally figure out what grace was. Now, it's preached in every church around the nation. But he said, until I understood the law, I never understood grace. Oh, praise God. Because he says, now I'm free. Now I'm free. To the, do the law. He said, grace just kept me alive until I figured out I was supposed to do the law. Right. <laughs> See, you don't understand grace until you understand the truth first. Yeah. People came to Moses to hear what? What the truth was. Can I say it that way? Yeah. Why did they come to Moses? Well, Moses will tell you the truth. Yeah. Now, here's, here's our problem now, is that I have told you the truth for 35 or 40 years here. And, you know, you could pass it off and go talk to somebody else and get the answer you wanted to hear. But your problem is now, there's even pastors up here telling you the truth. Now what are you going to do? Come on, you know the story. Well, Dad didn't tell me what I want, so i got to go talk to Mom. I'm telling you. My children got twice the punishment if they pulled that trick. Because that's called rebellion. That's not a second opinion. No. Mom and dad, one. Honor your what? Father and mother. There you go. So, you know, it's not, hey, mom. You know, and, and while I'm at it, lose the word hey when you talk to people. 
hey mom, hey dad, I'm not hey. Straw is cheaper, grass is free, buy a farm, get all three. My first name is not hey. My first name is not yo. My name is not B, A, or BB. I am Bishop Bill Anderson. You know, you try to help people and they just, you know, they won't work with you, you know? We are in a disrespectful world. You know, another thing I find out is apparently every parent has named their child Buddy. Because everybody is, hey, Buddy, hey, Buddy, hey, Buddy. Is your name Buddy? Bud for short? How about Bud Light? Well, it's just a, it's just a, I know it's just a, but it's not the truth. I know it's just a affection. I know, but the pastor just said we, we are hindered by our affections. President Obama walks into town. I don't, you know, there's a lot of names that you need, you would like to call him, but he is still Mr. President. Policeman pulls you over. Hey, buddy, what's up? I'll tell you what's up. You just got a ticket with Hey Buddy. Yo! Yo, Fuzz! What's happening, man? Come on. The society's in the toilet. What's wrong with... Hello? Good afternoon, officer. Obviously, I was doing something wrong, and I'm going to find out what it is. And I will pay the price for it. And your buddy is not going to help it. Your buddy. How about this one? Hey, yo, God. You got to be kidding me. Brother Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, slap yourself. We live in a world where Jesus is your Jesus Jesus MasterCard. And you just see if you can swipe it through and and try to con the Father out of something. Come on, we better get back to some respect. The reason they came to Moses, because he told them the truth. You can go anywhere else and hear what you want to hear. And, And most people do. Are you with me? Most people go where they can hear what they want to hear. Well, that, 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 that movie, it was okay. It only had one bad part. What, why is it that you remember that one bad part? The birthday thing. I, I've mentioned birthdays over the years. Many people in this house know that I don't celebrate them, but they still do themselves. Why? You Google everything else, just Google birthdays. See what you pop up with. I shouldn't deal with this because the pastors already did. Jethro didn't come to Moses and say, don't counsel the people and don't judge them. Moses came to the people, or Jethro came to Moses and said, man, you're going to wear yourself out. Because they're going to come and ask you, what should I do about Christmas? Well, it's a pagan holiday. You shouldn't celebrate it. What am I going to do about, you know, I want to do a little Easter egg hunt so I can reach children, call it evangelism. I'll tell you the truth. It's a pagan thing. You want to ask me about birthdays? John the Baptist lost his head at a birthday party. Not one of the disciples, not nowhere in Scripture does it say, remember birthdays and celebrate it every year. Especially put a stupid dunce cap on and then put candles on them, and then make a wish and blow it out. What part, what chapter and what verse does that make sense to? And everybody has to be obligated to get you a gift because you're older. Well, big deal. Dogs get older. Do you buy a gift for them too? Sacrifice to somebody that gets older. What's the scripture say? 
If you serve the Lord, you'll be renewed. Blowing out their light. And then make a wish and then blow out the candle. You're blowing out the spirit. You're blowing out life. And then just about every Christian dumped a bucket of ice over their head. I'm sorry, you just, you just said put them on ice. You know, you know the, the, the mafia understands what put, put them on ice means. It's a death sentence. It's a death curse. And Christians all over the place. Did you take the ice bucket challenge? You, 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 your brain is froze. Some people actually died. Well, everybody's doing it. I know. Everybody's committing adultery. Everybody's murdering. Everybody is sleeping around. Everybody is watching dirty movies. Everybody, 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 everybody. If you want to know what God says, I'll tell you the truth. And there was only one guy that would do that. Now, Korah, on the other hand, he splits churches. He'll tell you what you want to hear. But then the earth opened up and swallowed them up. Wow, I'm glad Bishop only has 20 minutes today. I hear the thunder. <coughs> We're getting pretty close to the mountain. Now, I, I tell you what. People came and asked Moses what God said. Next week, God himself is going to say it. Now, I'll give you a hint. When the people heard God say it, they came back and said, it's, been, it's cool, Moses, you just tell us. I mean, we'll go along with you just telling us. That thunder, that lightning, that smoke, that earthquake, that, you know, that volcano, that, you know, whoa. We can, I, can I just set up an appointment with you, Moses? But it's only if you want to know what God has to say. Now, Jethro, a priest, he makes this suggestion. I think it's good. Moses' father-in-law said unto him, this thing that you're doing is not good. You'll surely wear away. I mean, you'll get tired of telling people every little thing. Should I, should I get a tattoo? No. Well, I Googled it, and you know, I, I know, but it, it, if you Google it, you'll also find out that it is all demonic. It is all. Should I pierce my ear? Pierce your nose. Pierce your eyebrow. Pierce your finger. I mean, stick a sword through the middle of you. My God, what do you want to stick stuff through you for? Have you ever pulled a thistle? Is it that difficult to figure out? Am I male or female? Look down. Jethro says, look, it's too insane for you to answer all of these questions that people could just Google. There's a few things that you could just figure out. But see, you don't want to know the answer to it. Most people don't want to know about birthdays. Leave me alone. Most people don't want to know about Christmas. They don't want to know about Easter. They don't want to know about these things. Doggone it. I like it. Don't tell me about Fast and Furious. It's the cars. It's the cars. It has nothing to do with those babes in the cars. It's the cars. I just buy Playboy and Esquire for the The, the material, you know, the, the articles, the men articles. Yeah, I'm sure you blow past the pictures, right? It's my favorite show. I, I Really, I mean, it's my favorite show. I just kind of like it. I just, you know, I know there's some off-color stuff in there. I know it's witchcraft. I know it's sex. I know it's homosexuality. I know it's perversion and manipulation. But, you know... The star is a Christian. Do you want to know the truth? 
I mean, do you just want to know what God has to say? Or do you just want to write it off and say, well, this is the way that I worship God. You need to ask him. He said, I don't want any other gods before me. And if you do, it's disgusting to me. It is really quiet in here. Oh, shoot. Okay. Moses' father-in-law said unto him, the thing which you do is not good. You know, you're not, uh, uh, it's too heavy for you. You're not able to perform it yourself alone. Here now, listen unto my voice, and I will give you counsel, and God will be with you. Be thou for the people to Godward, that you may bring the causes unto God, and you shall teach them. You shall teach them ordinances, laws, and you shall show them the way wherein they must walk and the work that they must do. Jethro's father-in-law says, Moses, you really do have the father's heart. So you can teach them the laws of God and how they should walk and what they should do. Because you're not in it for yourself. When you get to be a father and a grandfather, there, there's, there's really nothing else you want to do. You've been there. You've done it. Are you with me? Yeah. Everything you do is so that they can do it. So they can learn it. So that they can experience it. I, I don't have a desire to play volleyball anymore. But yet we find ourselves playing volleyball. It is not for me. You understand? It's not to develop my volleyball skills. Yesterday, Liam's got a boomerang. I, I, I've thrown a boomerang before. I, I, I used to know how the thing works when you have a real one instead of a Walmart one or wherever you got that. But anyway, I mean, a real one really will knock off a bird and then come back to you. I mean, a real one really will do that if you got, the, you, you got the hand flip, you know. Now, this one, I knew I needed the wind blowing towards me. I needed the grace of God and the hand of God upon my life to throw that thing up in the air and for it at least to come close back. Now, Liam, uh, like Pastor Aaron said, it's called a fetch stick. He throws it out there, he goes out there, he fetches it. Only he doesn't fetch it, he just throws it back. And then it hits the house, and so we're not, you know. So, but anyway, I don't need to know how to throw a boomerang. It's kind of, that was something I used to do. Moses is not teaching the people how to come to the mountain so he can get to the mountain. He's already been there. He's not teaching the Ten Commandments so that he can figure out what they are. He already knows them. He's teaching them so that they can grow up and experience what God has. Are you with me? <laughs> Jethro says, you just teach the people. This is what I need you to do. Pick out some other people that they can deal with some of these other issues. So here it is. It says, you just go to God word. And teach them the work they must do. Moreover, you shall provide out of all the people, here's the qualifications, able men, such as fear God or fear their wife, men of compromise, loving to make a buck, and place them over to be rulers of thousands, rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties, and rulers of ten, and let them judge the people at all times. And it shall be that every great matter they shall bring unto you, but every small matter they'll judge. So it shall be easier for yourself, and they shall bear the burden with you. My message is basically this. Do you qualify to be a captain? Because if you can't tell people the truth, you don't qualify for this. If you're not able, response able, if you're not able to respond correctly, you don't qualify as a captain. We're going to the mountain. 
Are you going to qualify as a captain? Or are you disqualifying yourself because you're going to give people the wrong answer? What do you tell people about Christmas? Well, you know, Bishop's kind of hard on that, but, you know, shoot, you know. I mean, I still have my tree. I just don't let them know I have it. <coughs> the mountain is beginning to shake. If you're going to be a captain, you have to give them the same answer that Moses would give. And you have to give them the same answer that Father God would give. That's the point. It's not what you think or how you want to make everybody happy. Do you qualify to be people who fear God, reverence God? I mean, before you open your mouth and tell people some counsel, God is looking at you, hearing what you say as a representation of him. Do you understand? Shut your mouth until you know what he says. Don't say the Lord said. I've had so many people over the years, the Lord told me, the Lord told me, my God, if he did, I have no idea what God you serve because Father God would never say that. People have a boss. They don't like their boss. The boss is not doing what they want him to do. I'm talking about two people. Yes, one's close to me. Another one I do not know. My boss, I tell him what I need him to do. I tell my boss what he should do. You are not the boss. This one guy said he's mad at the boss because he doesn't let him out on time so he can go pick up his kids. Well, do you think it's not the boss's kids? Those kids are not the boss. Why is a boss responsible for your kids and your divorce and your mess that you're in? Get a life. Get another job. Well, you just need to pray for the boss that he changes his mind. Bad counsel. That's not the truth. Do not open your mouth and say something exactly opposite from what the father would say. Well, I just want to encourage him. We'll encourage him. To think about this. He's the boss. You're the employee. Do what he says. Yeah. End of story. If you don't want to do it, then go work for another boss. But all you're saying is, I want to be boss. I want to tell my boss what the boss should do. That is, that is the devil mindset. Yeah. Lucifer says, I don't like what dad says. And dad says, we'll get out of the house then. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the Lucifer is not praying. I pray that the father will finally come to his senses and let all of us children do what we want to do. It's not at all. Captains. Everybody say captains. Yeah. Do you qualify to be a captain? Well, you don't qualify to be a captain if you don't know what this says. Now, if someone comes to you and has a hard question, well, then you can say, you know, I don't know, but I'll find out. I'll call Bishop and find out what he's got to say. And if, and if I don't know the answer, I'm going to dig until I find the answer. How many has had me say, I don't know, but I'll find out? Yeah, I'll find out. You called me one time and asked me about the, the Greek and Hebrew about something I, not too long ago. And man, I went back and said, you know, I never looked at that. Thank you for looking at that. Made me look at that. And we both learned some things of what the Father says. But I'll never tell you my opinion about anything. Well, sometimes I will. <laughs> Exodus 19. I'm basically done. Here it is. Exodus 19. Verse 1, in the third month, everybody say the third month. When the children of Israel were gone forth out of the land of Egypt, the same day they came into the wilderness of Sinai. This Tuesday, everybody say this Tuesday. This is the scene that you're going to see. They made it to the mountain. 
This Tuesday, you will make it to the mountain. In this lap this year, according to the calendar this year, you will be within distance of the mountain. When the children of Israel were gone forth out of the land of Egypt, the same day they came into the wilderness of Sinai, for they were departed from where? Rephidim. What was the lesson they learned? God is still planning on making you a kingdom of priests. He's just looking to see how many qualify to be a leader. You have to know the truth on something. You can't give them a religious answer. Too many people give a religious answer. Here, <clears throat> one more story. A great woman of God who helped pioneer, probably was the biggest part of pioneering, an entire TV network. She just suffered a stroke, and she has now gone on to be with the Lord. And I believe she's gone on to be with the Lord. Ten years ago, eight years ago, she really took a stand for the kingdom message. She really took a stand, and she got some flack for it. But I know she was leaning towards the truth. And with pink hair, anybody can stand up and say, I believe, you know. Well, some leaders across the nation called prayer, and they bombarded heaven and ask God to heal her. Religious. Now, if two or more touching anything agreeing, it shall be done. They just proved to the world that doesn't work. Because she died. So basically, here's the deal. God says, well, I don't care what you want. It's tough. We got word of faith people that's calling things that be not as though they were. Oh, my child loves God. No, he doesn't. He's rebellious. He hates God. Once you find out what God says about it. Well, everybody in the church, I mean, they're saved. Well, God says to five foolish virgins, I never knew you. See, we don't pause to ask God what he says about it. We're so busy being word of faith people, calling things that be not as though they were, that we are a misrepresentation of God. Well, two or more touching anything agreeing, it shall be done. So we're just going to agree. Let's just agree on this. Now, I'll tell you the two you need to agree on. is find out what God says and then agree with it. But see, this mindset is if, if we gang up, if we get enough together and pray, we'll move the hand of God. That's like your children catching hands. Two or more touching anything agreeing, we'll, we'll make dad do what we want him to do. Well, it works if your dad doesn't know God. If your dad knows God, you're both going to bed. Are you with me? Yeah. You're an accomplice now. You were free until you joined in unity with this prayer. Come on. Come on. How many's, how many's done the, the witchcraft prayer, two or more, touching anything, agreeing, we can get God to do something? It will repent of witchcraft. Here, here's the simple thing. Just find out what Father says. And he will do what he says. We just pause for a moment. It's very possible that God says, she's finished her course. Enter into the joy that's laid up. She's, 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 she's done. Samson, he finally said farewell to everybody right after they chose a king. He said to him, what do you want a king for? I've never took anything from you. Now you want a king. He's going to tax you. He's going to take your gals. He's going to take your land. He's, he, he, oh, you want a king like all the other nations. What's been wrong with Yahovah being your king? He delivered you. He saved you. He provided for you. He's making you kings and priests, and now you want a king. Okay. So Samson says, I'm out of here. 
My job's done because you don't want to hear. You don't want to hear anymore. You just want to do what you want to do. Interesting, isn't it? Today, many have forsaken and gone back to Egypt because they don't really want to inquire of God. They just want to itching ears to find somebody that will tell them what they want to hear. Well, they camped there before the Lord, and immediately Moses went up to the mountain. So when we get there Tuesday, the first thing I'm going to do is head up the mountain. Find out what you've got to say. God says, get back down. Okay, I'll get back down. Tell them what I said. Okay, I'll tell you what you said. And then you'll respond, and then I'll head back up and tell God what you said. Here's the thing. I'm going to tell you the commandments. I mean, I already give you, you know, I just want to say, because it's going to happen Tuesday, I'll, I'll fill you in on what's going to happen Tuesday. All right, I already know the plan. I already been up there a couple times. I'm going to go up there, and God is going to say, if you do what I say, I'll make you a kingdom of priests. And then the people is going to say, yes, we'll do all that you say. It's in the scripture there. Uh, and the people answered and said, all that the Lord has spoken, we will do. Verse 9, all that the Lord has spoken, we will do. Thou shalt not have any other gods before me. Don't put buckets of ice over your head. Don't light candles and make a wish to some god and then blow it out. Yeah. Don't put your tooth that fell out underneath your pillow and expect an angel to show up and give you money. Yeah. Stop this stuff. Oh, it's so cute. No, if you do all, everybody say all. all. I'll make you a kingdom of priests. Moses goes back up and says, they'll do it all. Wow, that is really, that is really wonderful, man. We are going to be a kingdom of priests. God's going to take us right into the promised land. We're going to kick out the giants. We get those grapes. It's about this big. Hallelujah. Whoa. Amen. See the plan? God says, well, get back down because there's still a little cleaning up to do. Moses says, no, really, honest, they said, everybody said, well, we're with you. We're right with you, Pastor. God says, well, they're not quite all with you like you think. Easier said than done. Yes, we'll do that. Write the check. Show up. Becky, I want to congratulate you. This looks great today. She finished the journey and, and made it happen. Amen. So it's more than just someone saying, I'm going to do something. It's somebody that actually does the something. You're, you know, pick up the blocks, Liam. Yep, I'm going to do that. How come there's still blocks on the floor? I mean, you had good intentions. But good intentions in doing and finishing the job is two different things. Amen? All right, so here's the rundown. They arrive at Mount uh, Sinai the first of the month. So that means there was 15 days left in the first month. Yes, because on the 14th, the Lamb was slain, came out. They were 29 days in the second month. One day in this third month now. One day spent going up. One day going back up. And then three days of preparation. And that brings us to 50 days. Everybody say 50 days. So what are we doing these last three days? Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. What are you, you going to do? Wash. Clean up. What's, what's the last thing? It, uh, you're, what'd you say I said? You're, you're ripe? Yeah. I don't remember that, but it's amazing. You can influence people for a lifetime by just telling them the truth. You stink. No condemnation, just wash. How many understands? Truth, truth will make you free from stink. Amen. And once you understand it, you will be free from stink for the rest of your life. Praise God. All right. If you obey my voice, you're going to be a treasure unto me. You know what a treasure is? Something that's not common. It is not common. For people to totally obey God. It's not common. 
It's common for people to greasy grace do whatever they want to do, justify, you know, their birthday hats and their Christmas trees and their Easter eggs and justify it all as well as just a family get together. Well, get together with your family, but you don't have to worship paganism to do it. Get a volleyball and go kick it around. I mean, goodness sakes. But you don't have to have choose up teams and try to kill each other and be mad at who loses. I mean, just enjoy. Enjoy life. There's nothing wrong with enjoying life. But why do you, why do you have to be high, drunk, or worshiping pagan gods to enjoy life? Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. I want to talk a little bit longer because I just like to talk sometimes, but... You'll be a treasure. Everybody say a treasure. You'll be a kingdom of priests. You'll be a holy nation. Let's say it this way. Holy Bam Nation. How many wants to do it this year? So he spoke to the leaders. The leaders said everything you said we'll do. And Jehovah himself, this is what I want you to anticipate. After we make this last seven day journey here, we clean up, we fast, pray, anticipate. Do you understand that God himself could manifest in this place next Sunday? Now what's that look like? God said, I am that I am. He could be fire over this building. He could be a cloud over this building. Shoot, he could be a donkey that walks in here and prophesies. Are you with me? I mean, he could be a burning bush. It, it could come in here and these mountains could catch on fire but never consume it. On the day of Pentecost, it was like a rushing mighty wind that blew in and it filled all the house where they were sitting and tongues of fire set upon each of them and they all began to speak with an another language, another, some, they talk different than they ever talked before. And from there, thousands of people got saved. If that doesn't happen, we have food afterwards. So you don't want to miss, you don't want to miss next Sunday. How many of you think it'd be great if you got filled with his spirit? Such a way that you could answer anybody that inquires of God because you'd know what he had to say. Did you get anything out of this day today? Wow, we can do it, friends. I don't know. The minstrels come and praise God. We can do this. We can, we can do this. Do you know every revival that's ever swept the nation started with just a handful of people that was praying and wanting to, wanting God's presence. What do we want this Sunday? Well, we just, we just want his presence. Do not develop a preconceived idea of what that means. Pentecostals will say, well, it's, uh, we're all going to speak in tongues. Boy, that is so shallow compared to what I'm talking about here. Sure, speak in tongues, but also have a word of knowledge, word of wisdom, discerning of spirits, working of miracles, gifts of healing. But yet, those are just nine of the things that can happen. The fact that God the Father, His heart, His spirit comes into us, that will totally transform our lives. We start... Not just thinking the way Moses thinks, but we start thinking the way our Heavenly Father thinks. We start saying what our Heavenly Father starts saying. I'll tell you, we'll touch the world. We'll have the wisdom and the power to change many lives. How many is going to anticipate this week? Let this be the most serious week ever.